Hi, today we're going to look at landed cost for inventory and purchase order processing. We are using Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 for this demonstration. So to start the landed cost, we're going to need to start in the inventory module. So I'm going to pull up inventory itself and everything that we're going to do will be located in the card. So I have the card set to be uh, maximized, this section to be max maximized so it'll be a little easier to work. And down at the bottom you'll see my landed cost options. We have landed cost and we have landed cost group. So let's go ahead and set one up now. We're going to create one for just New York uh, City and I will pull up the uh, vendor and associate this cost with a vendor and my currency is US dollars and I'll just set up a rate type there. And I have three options for my calculations for the landed cost. A flat amount, a flat amount per unit, or a percent of extended cost. So I'm going to start out with a flat amount per unit. And the flat amount per unit is going to be $1.50. And at that point, I'll just want to make sure I have my tolerances set up. And I'll go ahead and click Save. The next thing we need to do is create a landed cost group. And this will be all of the individual landed costs that we can expect to receive invoices for, for shipments of items that we want included as one, with one inventory item. So we'll call this again New York City Insurance for CD-ROMs. Okay, so we'll look up our landed cost group, our landed cost. There's my New York City and it populates it all for me. Let's close that window out. The next thing we'll do is we're going to look at the item inventory item site combination. So we're going to pull up an item and let's pull up our CD-ROM and then we're going to go to quantity sites and this is the window where we will assign the combination item site and we'll also assign the landed cost associated with it. So I'm going to open up on two sites here and I'm going to change the warehouse site from primary US landed cost to the one we just created. So now when I use this uh, buy this item and have it sent to this warehouse, it is going to assume I also can be expecting an invoice from associated insurance for $1.50 for every unit that I created. So let's close that out and then let's save and close this out. Okay, so let's go through the process of creating a purchase order. So I'll go into my purchasing series and I'll start creating a PO. And I'm just gonna pull up a travel. And I'm going to buy um, let's say 200 of these Aegis at $30 a piece. So it's telling me I can expect to get an invoice from A Travel for $6,000. Okay, that's correct, we know that. I'm going to select the warehouse now and if I were to drill down I would be able to see the landed cost information right here, so the landed cost group. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this and receive a PO on it. Okay, and I'm going to receive 100 of them. And there's my 100. And it shows me now I can expect to get an invoice for $150 from Associated Insurance. So I'm going to be expecting that invoice. Let's post that. And then we'll receive a shipment for the remaining items. Again, I've got my landed cost total function there. Okay, so we know now that we've updated our inventory by 200 items. So now let's come in and let's do an inner match invoice because now we've received an invoice from Associated Insurance. You're going to want to then click on the landed cost button. If you do not click on it first and you look up the item, you'll see the inventory item list. If you click on it and then look up the item, 
you're going to see all of your landed cost list, all your landed cost items. And we're going to select that New York City insurance. And now it's going to prompt us, what, what is the invoice for? We know that the cost is $1.50 each, but what did we get it for? We had 200 of them. So we'll click to 200. And notice we're not populating PO, but we will need to match it to the receipts that came in. And here are our receipts. So we had 200. Okay, so we can match it up to these receipts so we see exactly uh, which receipts this belongs to, which shipment. Because land and cost relate to the shipment and not to the invoice. It relates to the goods and not the cost of the goods. But if we were to drill back in and click on this match invoices, we have this option here because right now it knows this is where it got coded, the purchase price variance. If we want it to revalue our inventory, in other words, increase the cost of our inventory $1.50 a unit, we'll just simply click on these boxes, click OK, and that will change or update the cost of inventory. What's going to actually end up happening is purchase price variance account gets reduced and inventory gets increased and so that's how that would actually happen and we see the word multiple there because we do have it matched to multiple shipments and we have our payment terms set up here so once I post this it now is an invoice for associated insurance it relates specifically to those two uh, shipments that I received in and in this case because I marked that box it will increase my unit cost of my inventory so when I sell it it'll be at a higher price. I hope this is a good overview for you for landed costs and I hope this helps. Thanks!